Intuition, immediate cognition without the use of conscious rational processes. Hey, my friends, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Anna Anastasia, and this channel is about everything that is mindful, minimalist, and creative. And today I want to talk to you about intuition and five easy methods to develop it. Sometimes it's called premonition, sixth sense, innate knowledge, gut feeling, or even instinct. So, but first of all, what's the point in developing our intuition? Because it helps us stay more mindful and present in the moment. It makes us less dependent on other people's opinions. It can take away that feeling of meaninglessness of everything that many people are prone to having from time to time. It makes us feel more connected with the world and, after all, it makes the life far more interesting and exciting. I believe in intuitions and inspirations. I sometimes feel that I'm right. I do not know that I am. If you're a highly sensitive person, you can share probably a ton of examples how you followed your intuition and it worked to the best way possible or even saved your life. And nowadays, scientists are conducting a lot of research about intuition and its role in our life. And I will link uh, a very interesting and easy to read article about uh, one research. This video is based on my own subjective experience, so please feel free to share more methods in the comment section. And I strongly believe that every human can develop intuition and thus open up to just a new facet of perceiving this world. So, method number one. I grew up in a tiny one-bedroom Soviet apartment that was shared by six of us. My mom, my dad, my brother, me, our cat Pusha, and our dog Chip. And uh, space was always a scarcity, but my father managed to collect a huge library. Of course, huge relatively to our mm, space. And books were everywhere, and it was very, very hard to make one's way through it. So books were in the curtain boxes, on the shelves, in our tiny pantry, everywhere. So each time I wanted something to read, I would come up to my father and ask him what I wanted. One day, I was 14 probably, I came to my father and asked, for something to read, uh, something that was exciting, but not fiction, fairy tales, but kind of more <laughs> real. And he gave me a book that was called Phenomena, a book of wonders. Of course, it was a Russian translation. And there was a chapter in this book that blew my mind completely, so it was about coincidences. And of course, now I don't have this book at hand, but I managed to find one interesting story uh, from that chapter about coincidences. It's about a man who has eaten plum pudding three times in his life, and all those times he saw encountered a certain person. So I will leave the uh, full story in the description section in case you're interested. Noticing coincidences helps us reach a whole new level of understanding the life and although uh, to some it can seem nonsensical, there are huge minds standing behind this theory and supporting it. Swiss psychologist Carl Jung coined the term synchronicity to describe coincidental yet meaningful events in the external life that do not have any obvious explanation or cause. Jung claimed that occurrences that are often labeled as coincidences are not 
actually coincidences at all and they do not happen by chance. Instead, he believed that those occurrences are directly related to the observer's mind and serve to provide them insight, directions and guidance. Each person had only one genuine vocation to find the way to themselves. Their task was to discover their own destiny, not an arbitrary one, and to live it wholly and resolutely within themselves. Everything else was only a would-be existence, an attempt at evasion, a flight back to the ideals of the masses, conformity and fear of one's own inwardness. So look for those breadcrumbs that show you the way. It can be anything, a book, a number, a person, a sound, a word, just anything. And the more you notice them, the more they will reveal themselves and the more your inner magnet will grow. Notice your feelings when something good is about to happen and try to remember it and then notice when something bad is about to happen and actually happens. It can be a certain feeling, uh, it can be even a taste or smell or um, the light and darkness ratio. It's, it's very individual for each one of us. For example, for me, the light and darkness um, sensations work the best. Some people, situations and even places uh, feel kind of colorless and dark when I think of them. And uh, this is always a sign that I should stay away from them. I use this method when I need to take a decision whether to go somewhere or meet someone or do something. And if I had that feeling of dark clouds inside, I never do that. And also, this is how I recognized Brian, my husband, for who he is. The first time when we talked, I felt that special feeling of bright light wrapping me up. And even the shorter version of his name, Bry, sounded like the word bright to me. And we actually had a lot of coincidences and amazing discoveries in our story. And uh, Brian doesn't even know about all of them. But I have a special place in my heart to remember them. At various points in our lives or on a quest and for reasons that often remain obscure, we are driven to make decisions which prove with hindsight to be loaded with meaning. Try to remember your sensations and your response to them, and then pay attention each time when similar sensations appear again. This is how you will know what to prepare for and what to choose. Ask yourself a question and then notice the first answer that comes to your mind. It can be not even in words, but a special feeling, a, a knowledge or an image. You can uh, say the question in your mind, you can write it down, just whatever works for you. But this method may not work when our mind is too restless or anxious, and that's why I find it the best uh, to use it right after or before sleep, when the mind is in that sort of in-between state. We all dream, but not everyone remembers their dream. This skill can be easily trained and there are various techniques that can be found online or in some books. And I find it very helpful to write down all the dreams that seem significant to me in any way. It can be even a single image or a feeling or a phrase or even a word. So um, write down a dream, have a habit of writing them down um, frequently. Because, you know, sometimes even the dreams that do not seem significant to you from the first sight can bear a lot of meaning. And also mark uh, the date, the day when you were having the, that dream. 
then regularly go through your uh, book of dreams and I'm telling you, you will find many amazing realizations in there and they will be different for everyone. The dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul which opens to that primeval cosmic night that was soul long before there was conscious ego and will be soul far beyond what a conscious ego could ever reach. I often see what will happen, but in a while, uh, with approximately a six-month difference. And it's really amazing how much we can learn from our dreams. Symbols are ingrained in our mind, in our collective consciousness. It was discovered that different nations and ethnic groups that never interacted with each other living on the opposite ends of the world have similar fairy tales, folklore based on the same plots, schemes, characters, messages and symbols. We all have one root and we can learn how to recognize it and feel it when we need it. You can feel attachment to certain symbols that are close to your culture or your faith and through them your intuition will speak to you and help you navigate this uh, sea of life. And symbols are everywhere. Actually, language is a system of symbols just as music is or it's numbers, colors, just anything. Choose your own beacon and follow it. Reading symbols is a powerful tool to develop your innate knowledge of things. Nature is a temple in which living columns sometimes emit confused words. Man approaches it through forests of symbols which observe him with familiar glances. Yes, there is a lot of skepticism about intuition, but I strongly believe that it's one of the greatest wonders that we humans are given. And following this path of intuition can help us understand who we actually are and why we are here, what do we really want and need, which can be quite different from what we are told by others. Listening to yourself is very empowering and transformative. Certainly, there are things worth believing. I believe in the brotherhood of man and the uniqueness of the individual. But if you ask me to prove what I believe, I can't. You know them to be true, but you could spend a whole lifetime without being able to prove them. The mind can proceed only so far upon what it knows and can prove. There comes a point where the mind takes a leap. Call it intuition or what you will and comes out upon a higher plane of knowledge, but can never prove how it got there. All great discoveries have involved such a leap. This is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end, my friends. As always, please feel free to share in the comments uh, your thoughts about intuition, whether it can be developed and how. And for now, uh, be safe and Keep your heart open and I hope to see you soon. Пока-пока.